This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who competes at BKFC 51 in a very intriguing main event matchup on September the 29th with that strawweight championship being defended and Melanie Shaw trying to contend for it. We've got Britton Hart on the show and very excited to talk about that fight. How's your day going there, Britton? Um, it's so good. Thanks for checking in with me. Um, sorry, I look kind of like crap, but hey, you know, we're three weeks out from the fight, so every minute counts. Woke up, I just got done with the gym, um, which went really good. I uh, get to get a little break, I run my three miles, and then I go back to the gym at 4 to 30 tonight. So, yeah, it's just like I said, living life and in those moments trying to do the best with what I can. I do have two French Bulldogs, so let me put that out there. <laughs> and one of them is expecting, so oh my gosh, right during my fight camp. But um, I'm always on the move with something, you know, that's how life goes. Yeah, I mean, definitely comes across. And just kind of to that point, I mean, this would seem like an interesting one. Like last time was obviously a big card in Virginia, very historic. But And you, and you describe that initial chance as like a dream come true. Like how does it feel to be, you know, going back and being in such a prominent position here. Okay, so this is 10 times more of a big deal. Honestly, I'm looking at this fight as the most important fight of my whole entire life. This is literally the full circle fight. Last time, it was a lot of one personal issues. He's in the past, it's gone. But it was in Norfolk, Virginia. And Norfolk is special to me in the fact that I graduated from Old Dominion. Um, so I got my master's degree out there, which was cool. But... Salem, Virginia, what people don't know is that this girl worked at that Kroger literally 10 minutes down the road for like a year. And then I worked at the restaurant 419 10 minutes down the road for two years. Then I worked cutting trees where I went around to all the houses and neighborhoods around there for a year. So, like, I have legit sweat equity like in Salem and Roanoke, Virginia, all my friends live there. The people I went to high school, there's no, you know, Norfolk was like a four hour drive for them. These people, it's out in their backyard. So this is literally me fighting in my backyard. I can't explain how much, you know, that that means to me and to everybody, you know, because uh, it goes full circle. Like I said, I, I, I'm one of you know, the blue collars, like, you know, I had to work and, and sweat and bleed to get where I was, you know, I I grew up poor, I grew up broke, I had a hard life, and, and it comes full circle to go from being a someone who cuts trees and works in the tree industry, who works as a bartender, who works at Kroger, which is a grocery store, to now I'm here as a main event for these people, I, I just want to be that beacon of light, and, and Norfolk, you know, it's hard, it's it costs money to make that four-hour trip. You know, four hours there, four hours back. Then you got to get a hotel. You know, I, I sympathize. Like, a lot of people really love me and care about me, but they don't necessarily have, I don't want to say the money, but, like, the times and the means to make that trip. It, it takes a lot, you know. It, to support me would be, like, you know, a six $700 thing. Now they can literally just get in the car and drive 15, 20 minutes, get a $30, $40 ticket and be like, wow, she did the damn thing. She really did. And, um, yeah, that means that's the most important fight of my life. It really is. And I just love hearing that because, I mean, if everything goes perfectly, I mean, by the end of the year, you'll be at that, like, dozen BKFC fight mark just readying for this sophomore title defense here. So, I mean, obviously very established, but just cool to hear your enthusiasm talking about this here. Yeah, and a big thing for me, and um, personally, maybe selfishly, I think last Virginia fight, you know, I got, I was so stressed out, man, I was about to die, like, I really had, like, so many anxiety attacks and heart attacks, and I just wanted the whole thing to be over, it got really ruined for me, and, and as you see, like, when I won the belt, like, it just breaks my heart, I don't even watch that fight back, because when they put the belt around me, you can, like, I just feel like my happiness was robbed in that moment. And I I didn't choose, you know, I didn't choose to be happy. I was more so just thankful it was over. It was a huge nightmare on the the personal things I was going through. You know, 
I let somebody have a little bit too much power over my thoughts and emotions and going through like a, a, a terrible, disgusting divorce. You know, now I'm like, I really want that for me. Like, how dare I let that person rob me of my happiness? How dare, like, anybody would have killed to be in that, in that limelight and win that belt. And here it is, I let this person steal my happiness. So, like, for me, my goal is to go in there, not be stressed out on the little bullshit, on the petty stuff, and, and just be happy that I'm there, happy that I made it. Um, and I really want that for myself. I really want to go in, not like, I mean, I definitely always have a chip on my shoulder. Let's not ever forget that. That's who I am. But I want to go in there and just be like, you know, this chip's on my shoulder, but hey, you know, that's for another time. I want to show everyone I'm happy that they believe in me. I'm happy I made it. I want to smile on everybody's face who try to bring me down or say that I couldn't do it. I want to just laugh like, ha ha, like, look at me now, bitches, you know, <laughs> that's who I want to be. And I want to do that for myself. And I mean, maybe this isn't the same thing. Like maybe there's some catharsis even in this, but it seemed like the last fight was also very just focused on like the bad blood component like the operative wording you used was oh the bad blood's 20 times worse with jenny savage so maybe even like a clearer mind in a competitive context for this next one because it seems like mostly oriented to competition with melanie shaw uh yeah bingo sorry if it cut out um no oh. yeah you're right and i i kind of forget about that big time but yes that does make sense that's probably why i was so angry too I hate Jenny Savage. I can't stand her. And she ruined that whole fight for me as well, just with her stupid mouth. And so when I got there, it was kind of like, I'm not going to entertain this. It made the fight really, it made the fight distasteful in how she was acting and behaving. And yeah, she said it was a lot of bullshit. You're right. I forgot about that. So Melanie, super respect. What a great sportsmanship. Um, you know, what a great female, what a great athlete she's gotten in there. I have so much to respect for her. She did it in the right way. Uh, you know, I've watched all her fights, and um, I really like her as a person. And, you know, to me, it's, it's it shows the hungriness. I can I can see, I look at her and I see myself at least, at least bits and pieces. And it's like, damn, I love sharing the ring with people like that. They deserve it. That girl, she deserves a main event spot. And honestly funny enough i was supposed to get the main event when i was in norfolk and um i told them don't dare make me the main event you make reggie the main event because i don't want that bitch Cindy savage to be the main event so they were like wow really and i was like yeah <laughs> don't don't because i don't want that girl to ever say that she got a main event spot fuck her so <laughs> i actually swear to god now i have text messages and everything i said hey you guys just just make me the co-main event Please. So, um, this, <laughs> Melanie, she deserves the, the main event 100%. She's a fighter. She's tough. You know, she gets up when she gets knocked down. Um, my only, like, uh, I guess, chip on my shoulder thing that I could even say is that I just hope, I hope she makes weight. Um, I'm worried about that. But if not, you know, whatever. Like I said, I'll fight Godzilla. But I do hope she makes weight. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like you're very familiar with her leading into this. Like, you seem very familiar with her resume and some of her better, you know, stylistic attributes and stuff like that, for sure. So, I mean, yeah, that's cool to hear. Is there, like, any more detail to her game that you have, like, picked up on as well? Because you talk about, like, a certain level of resilience, and she really earned the shot, and you have seen the fights. But, like, are there some other, I guess, aspects and facets to her game that you've noticed? Yeah, she's a, she's a dog, you know, and a lot of people, fighters that, you know, you either have or you don't, and she has it, and she throws punches and bunches, she keeps throwing, like I said, she reminds me a lot of me, especially in my early fights, um, you know, just, you just bite down and say, here we go, you know, and I see the bed in her, and so for me, I can see the evolution in myself, and it makes me smile, she'll get the, you know, one day, she'll stick with it, she gets it, she's works hard she's a mom and she's an amazing wife and she's dedicated to the game and in whatever facet she has to even if it's working out in her backyard and, and I, I was there once so I, I you know then that change can happen I know that, that with myself too that change can happen overnight sometimes so um something to be cautious for but I know you know for me um because I've been through it before I feel like you know it's nothing disrespectful to her it's just I've been there before 
and and I know I know how to get around that, but I also know what doesn't get around that, and um, so I just have to go in there with again, you know, all the heart in the world and, and the toughness and the resilience that she's gonna have. I know she's gonna come. I know she's gonna put the pressure on me, and and you know, as you've seen my last few fights, you know, I've been spoiled. Uh, no one wants to get near me. You know, Jenny Savage sure as hell didn't. She stayed far away, and you know, some of these people are like more counterfighters and they're just waiting for me to throw first and this um melanie isn't gonna do that she's gonna she's gonna go get it and bite down and and um you know i I haven't been challenged like that in a while really i'm trying to think of the last person who's challenged me like that and no everyone i fight so recently has been uh been um Randine, honestly, Randine is the only person who bit down and came and got me. And Trissa, you know, Trissa did too. I, I give Trissa hats off. She she bit down and came and got me. But you know, again, people forget I started off as a dog too. Yeah, people can't forget that part of it for sure. But you did mention Reggie earlier, and I'm kind of curious because I know you were able to, you know, get some work with him like ahead of the last fight. I know he's ultimately on a you know, different event here and everything, but have you been able to work with Reggie a bit ahead of this one? No, I haven't. And I feel terrible. Uh, I should probably reach out to him. I think he knows. I think we're really connected. Um, definitely through God and spiritually, but you know, it's only a matter of a phone call for us to just be back in that same, that same headspace. Um, the camp I did with him, I know they don't want to hear it, but again, I apologize. I was almost, it was almost embarrassing I've never been so mentally distraught during a during a fight camp, and they could see that. But you know, I showed up every day, even if I sucked and and was you know scatterbrained as as hell. You know, I showed up every day, and I retained everything that they they taught me and showed me. And man, they are true. I mean, the most intense gangster bare knuckle fight camp is with Reggie Barnett, hands down. And you guys have known I've trained with a lot of bare knuckle fighters. He is absolutely the most um, gangster OG, one of a kind, specific to bare knuckle training that I've ever come in contact with. Um, but you know, for me, my soul was really broken after that um, fight, and um, I really tried to keep it in Virginia. But I, I learned the lesson that when I was there, again, like I said, it was almost embarrassing to be honest and truthful. It was embarrassing doing my fight camp in Virginia, and I think for me. It's just too many triggers, you know. I have too many, like, PTSD moment, like things in Virginia from my past, from, like, you know, ex, ex-husbands being beat, being robbed, being this, being that, you know, let's get into it. Um, just so many bad things that in, in fight camp, I thought that it would be good because it would be that reminder to make that, like, angry Brit chip on the shoulder, and, uh, you know, like, all destruction. But now I'm kind of realizing that's not really a good thing. And that being controlled and, and peaceful is better. And, and Florida has been that for me um, 100%. You know, the ocean's right there. People here are just, it's a different wave of energy. It's a different lifestyle. And it's something I really need in my in my healing and my growing and my evolution right now is to be with something that's more flowing than than poking at like the triggers and, and the pain receptors that I have. This is more healing down here. So I chose to do my camp here. But don't worry, Marcus Luck. I want to give him a shout out. That man again, we talk on the phone all the time. I send him my stuff. And that man knows me inside and out. He has for the last nine years. So he's one too that will be there and no matter what I'm at, he'll know exactly what to say to get that dog out of me. So he's a he's that guy for me. So I'm still, you know, we're, we're still with the same Virginia team. You know, I still remember where I came from. I just can't lose my shit there at fight camp, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, if anything, it just speaks volumes to how you always manage to get in that great work. I think the last time we were talking, you kind of joked that like some people call you a gym hopper or they used to at the very least. But I mean, just some of the work you've been able to get in and like, you know, even Miami in the past with like Kelly Caroni or like Lorenzo Hunt and Elvin Brito and Puerto Rico. Like it just seems like you always find a way to get in the great work. And I love the, you know, fight IQ dynamic too, even in the sense of like wanting to like maintain your composure and like analyzing it through that kind of lens. So that's interesting. 
Yeah, it's different looks, and you know, that's what it's about. You know, it's been a very confusing time. You know, it can be like that to everybody. Like, hey, you know, loyalty, stay where you're at, and 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 put that in and build there. And then you hear the other motivations, like, no, get out of your comfort zone. You got to get out of the box. You got to meet new things. And it's like, ah, oh, which one do I do? I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, you just got to follow your gut on that. And so that's definitely what I've been doing that way. And, yeah, I mean, I've been, even the gym I'm at right now, like, leveled up in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, my God, let me tell you. They were, I mean, they're amazing. I got to see Teofimo Lopez in his fight camp. So that's, like, one with the stars. And then Elia, uh, her nickname is the Soul Snapster, to see her, her, her coaching and her work. <laughs> Johnny Thunder, who's actually going to be having his pro debut on the same day I am see those guys has been really new for me and it has been exactly a level up and then I go to Carter's part where it's like man the like real OGs take it to day one it works it worked for the legends it worked for Mike Tyson Muhammad Ali why you know go and fix it if it's not broke and I love that gym I get sparring with the guys all the time and and it's amazing they don't take it easy on me for sure I mean we talk shit in the gym that's fun um so I've really that's been a brand new experience for me for this fight camp and I think it's been really important to kind of have that because again we kind of get too comfortable sometimes you know and again, there's nothing wrong with the gyms I've been at. I love them all, but it's very easy to go and be like, "Hey, what's up?" And then we have like 30 minute conversation, and then a new person comes in, and you're like, "Hey, what's up?" And, you know, and, you know um, so it, it's kind of they let you kind of do your own thing because they trust you. You know, Britain's the champ; she knows what she's doing. But sometimes I need that new like, "Hey, they don't know what I'm doing," and shit. Some days I don't know what I'm doing. Let me let me learn from you. You know. Yeah, for sure. I love hearing about all that. Just great work in abundance for sure and I mean I kind of want to talk about this but also wouldn't feel any kind of way if you didn't want to just because you're so hyper focused on the next fight but just noticing you have a fight in Thailand a bit later in the year I guess I'm even just curious to get your insights on the location because you gave great insights on how much you know Virginia means to you and the connections but you've also in past talked about oh it'd be cool to travel to fight so how cool is it to have this Thailand opportunity Man, it's it, it's seriously like I, I I actually don't even focus it and I pretend it's not a thing because I don't want to jinx my Virginia fight. But when you bring it up, I'm like, please. That's why this like that's why I tell you the Virginia fight is so important. It's the most important fight of my life because that fight and winning and doing good in that fight makes my real freaking like another dream come true i've always wanted to fight in another country i'm not taking away from any pro- professional fighter and shit i'm in the same boat but for me i was like you're not really a world champion or a professional athlete until you go and fight out of your country because if not it's like well you know it's home home field advantage all the time in that in that aspect and and you know you're more like a national champ you're not really a world champ if you've never competed outside your you know, nations. So it's huge. And I called out the Thailand champ a while ago and everyone was like, no, you know, probably won't happen. She's going to come here. And I was like, oh man. So to see this is, it was, when they told me I was fighting in Thailand, honestly, it was shocked. Uh, my heart dropped to my stomach because I, I really wanted to fight in New Mexico and then that fight didn't happen. And then I wanted to fight in Miami that just happened. And that didn't happen because they're like, well, you're going to have the Virginia fight. So then I got the Virginia fight. And I was like, great, yeah, da, da, da. you know, let's go. I just want to fight, man. I really just want to fight at this point. I don't care where it is. And then they're like, oh, yeah, and we're going to send you to Thailand. I'm like, oh, you are now. When? And they say November 5th. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this year, you mean I'm going to Thailand five weeks after the Virginia fight? So, gosh, you know, I know. And it's funny. I start off the conversation when I tell people, I'm like, Hmm, so I know this isn't a great idea. You know, the best stories always start with that. I know it's not <laughs> the best idea to do, but yeah, I want to go to Thailand five weeks after my fight, so we got to make sure that we stay really, you know, really good, and, and we got to have a quick fight because I can't be chance getting hurt and having anything happen to me to have this freaking fight delayed. And, and some people are like, 
well, Brent, just cancel, like, screw the Virginia fight. You know, don't take the Virginia fight. Just do the Thailand fight. And that was talked about. So this is definitely a, like, special exclusive. But it was talked about, like, cancel the Virginia fight. And I'm like, you know what? I've done that. I've done that before in my past. And um, I've made a, that was a huge mistake. And uh, if I could go back and tell myself that, I would fix that because tomorrow's never promised. And, and we really got to get that as, as fighters and as human beings is that nothing is guaranteed and nothing is promised. And that I could cancel this Virginia fight and be so gun-ho about the Thailand fight. I could get injured and not be able to fight. My opponent can get injured and not be able to fight. And guys, I mean, if I would have told you four years ago, some crazy pandemic would have broke out and the whole world would have been shut down for months, you would have been like, ha, 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 yeah, right. That would never happen. But well, you know, what happened, you know, back 2021. And, and I had an awesome boxing contract then that I was like, oh, my whole life is set. So you can't do that. And so you got to come with what goes first. Don't ever trade up what comes first um, in your life ever. And so for me, the Virginia fight is most important. It comes first. And I don't care on how great of an opportunity. I don't care if this Thailand fight is $2 million. I'm going to call bullshit. And if it's $2 million, it'll be there after the 29th, too. But I am I am very excited about it. I, I really am. It's, I cannot, you know, reiterate how much of a dream it is to go to another country. And then that's cool. And then specifically, you know, I've been in Europe before. I've been in Africa. I've been in South America. I've never been to Asia. So just to say that, you know, it's it's like, man, fighting has really made my dreams come true. It's not even that I'm fighting in Thailand. It's should I get to go to Thailand? Like, I'm really happy. And Thailand is like known for being such a, like a cultural like dominant feature in combat sports with Muay Thai and people like literally go and move over there just to train in the Thailand way. So as a combat sports fanatic, I mean, this is like really winning the lottery. Yeah, for sure. And obviously didn't mean any disrespect to Melanie Shaw when I kind of touched on that. We can definitely set up another chat to get into the, you know, machinations of that next matchup. Just think it's like a cool journey in the context of like, just what you've been able to overcome. Like, I remember we were talking one time and I was referencing like when you were like sleeping out of your car and like going in the planet fitness. So it just, I mean, what a story. It just seems like you're killing it. Yeah. You know, what's funny. And I, I, you know what I just did this morning. You won't even believe guess where I was at. <laughs> where you at planet fitness. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I was at Planet Fitness this morning. That's where I went. No joke. I went to Planet Fitness, run my three miles, and then I go to the boxing gym four thirty to seven thirty tonight. But yeah, I so you know what? And, and that's what they say. They're like, "Great, I hope you never change." You know, when you get too big, don't forget about the small guys. I'm like, man, my ass will always be going to Planet Fitness. They saved my life. Them, them bagel breakfasts and pizza nights and and showers. And just 24 hours and convenience that it saved my life as a young athlete and a young adult. And so, yeah, I still go there just to remember, like, you remember when you were here and this was your only hot meal a day? Damn. Yeah, for sure. And apologies for losing a bit of track of time there. I feel like just the way you talk about the fight game, I kind of lose the thread a little bit, I lose track of just what the clock is saying and all that. But just in, you know, saying that, Britain, is there maybe a final parting thought you'd want to add as we're sort of wrapping up here? You've been great with your time. Uh, you know what? I, it's just awesome to talk with you again. And it makes me smile. So thank you for bringing that up. It makes me smile, like, where we've been, you know, where we are and where we're going. And so but that, I just hope that resonates with everybody. You know, these are real stories like on, on on stuff like hey you know you don't have to have all the answers and all the bells and whistles you can be you know a champion just go on a planet this you know levels and just keep that you know keep that same work ethic and you know i try to be positive as much as i can so it's cool to share the stories we all laugh about it one day but i'm excited for what's coming next and i hope you guys are too and and watch me in my hometown, Salem, Virginia, on September 29th. And then uh, maybe we'll have another little chat after on how that went. And now uh, where we're going, and maybe I might get a baby elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would very much enjoy that. And, I mean, great story so far, for sure. And very excited for that next chapter to unfurl at BKFC 51. But to reiterate, thanks so much for the time, Britton. And looking forward to this one and seeing the fight. But until then, just have a good rest of your day. Thank you. 
Absolutely. Thank you. You too. This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on. $50 buys.